What I'm going to do today is explain and demonstrate the chromatic scale. I brought out here, what is a chromatic scale? Well, I'll go on to demonstrate and show you actually ex exactly what one is. So I brought out there are 12 notes in Western music as opposed to Eastern music. And these notes are basically played at different pitches, high or low, bass or clef. And I've wrote out the numbers here, and I'll show you what they are. Here we are. Now the 12 chromatic notes, A, A sharp, B, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, and G sharp. Now, there's also what's known as enharmonic notes. Now, I wrote, write those in. They're also known as the flat notes, but they're basically the same as sharpened notes. Here's what I mean. So A sharp is the same as B flat, C sharp is the same as D flat, and so forth. Now, I don't expect you to understand that. I'm going to demonstrate it and show it on a keyboard, and then later on on a guitar. So if you don't understand it just at the minute, you will do it shortly when I show the black notes on a keyboard. That's what these are. Okay? And just before I draw up the keyboard diagram, I just want to point out the chromatic scale. I don't like the word scale. Really what it is, is just a linear, straight, alphabetical list of 12 notes, including the enharmonic equivalents of sharps and flats. I've just drawn two horizontal lines here. With the ruler, I've drawn a straight line on the left from top to bottom, and two roughly halfway, just short of halfway. This is just to show you how to make your own keyboard if you want. So I'm just going to do two lines there, full line, three lines, about a third of the way, just over a third of the way up. Full line, then two lines. Just make sure that, yep, and then a full line, and then three lines. So it just repeats that pattern the whole way along, okay? Full line two, full line three, full line two, full line three. At the top of those, which I've completed here, I've turned all these short lines into T's with just a short horizontal stroke on the top of each one. Now I'm just going to go on to just draw some vertical lines, just freehand the whole way along. That's what we're after here. Yeah, I think, yeah, you can see that. I'm not going to colour them in at this stage, and even if I did, I would just do them very lightly. Actually, yes, I am going to, going to just shade them in. For the purpose of just showing you the groupings. Now what I mean by the groupings is this, hang on. Right, I've shaded them all in. Now if you notice here, we've got two black ones. And here we have three black ones. And again, it repeats the whole way along like this. Yep. Two there. And, well, there would actually be three there if I just drew in another one, okay? Now, no matter whether you've got a fancy grand piano, an upright piano, an electronic keyboard, um, or even a small keyboard, every one of them are laid out the same way. Now, what they have is this, the same layout of, of white and black keys. Groups of three, then two black ones are repeated the whole way along. Because every keyboard, electronic keyboard or piano, because they kind of vary in length, it can get a bit confusing to match note for note, like for like. If I'm sitting here with a small keyboard and somebody's with a grand piano, I'm going to kind of struggle to know, to match the notes until we actually start playing and even then the nuances of the sound might put me off so we could do with some reference point an agreed point now that point is called the concert pitch it's the a above middle c now what the heck is that well i'm going to go on to explain to you what i've brought out here 
In order for us to determine a common note sound between keyboards or pianos, we have to learn about an agreed note pitch called A above middle C. I'll show and explain what that is in a minute on a keyboard. This is a universally agreed frequency of 440 hertz wavelength on an oscilloscope or oscillograph, I think you might call it. Uh, we won't get all technical about that. I'm just going to show you where this A is above middle C. So we've got to determine where that middle C is, and then we can find the concert pitch A. So to determine the middle C, when keyboards can vary in length, uh, we need to find some ways of finding that middle C. So it's going to be, obviously, somewhere in the middle, um, and we need some routes to find it. So I'm going to explain that next. I've wrote out here, finding the middle C. This middle C is going to be really, really important. Now, obviously, because it's called middle C, it's going to be somewhere near the middle of the keyboard. Uh, so these white keys don't have uh, a written reference on them saying middle C, and nor do they have the A above middle C. The A above middle C, incidentally, it's only a few notes up. So obviously, it's going to be somewhere near the middle, but it is often off to the right or off to the left on these smaller keyboards. So how can we find it? How can we find this middle C that's so important, this reference anchorage point, so that we can also find the A above middle C? Well, first of all, of course, we can just look in the instruction manual of the keyboard or the piano. Um, we can also try to match the sound to a known reference pitch, like a, a tuning device. Some tuning devices come with a pitch that you can switch on and you can hear, and it's the A above middle C concert pitch. It's a high pitch sound, but you can match your keys on your piano somewhere in the middle when you've determined the A's, of course. Um, I don't think tuning devices have this C, so we can uh, obviously try to find the A instead. Um, other ways of finding it is to match with another keyboard. Match the sound of the Cs once we've determined <coughs> um, a couple of Cs to listen to. And we can go on to listen to the A above middle C to see if they match. And another one is to guess the middle C and we can also look up a reference, maybe on Google, for a full-size piano uh, to count the numbers for the middle C. So on a keyboard, we can see this, uh, this grouping of two black, three black, two black, three black, the whole way along a piano keyboard. Once we've determined the position of the middle C here, so we've got a group of two, and to its left is middle C. And if we look for another group of two here, this is another C. Of course, it's not middle C. That's a higher pitch C. And if we look at another group of two black ones here, to its left is another C. That's a lower C in pitch. So now we've found the middle C, we can go alphabetically C, D, E, F, G, A. I'm going to put A there. Just write that C in there. And that is A. 440 hertz. Concert pitch. Okay. Now, we shall leave off now about this middle C and this A. The anchorage points for further discussion about this chromatic scale. So what is this chromatic scale and what notes can we start from and lead to? Well, obviously, we might as well start on the beginning of the alphabet, the A. So we've determined the A's. Let's have a look at the A's. We've got this A. Uh, concert pitch 440 the A above middle C but of course if we look at the group of three black notes here I know I haven't shaded them out here but anyway it's it's always between these two here 
So if we go further down here, this group of black notes here, between them two here is another A, and this is lower in pitch, and so forth, further down or further up the keyboard. So I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll start on this A here, and I'm just going to just draw that in. So I'm going to put A there. Now I want to find this A, A sharp, B, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, and then we're back to A. That's the 12 notes of the chromatic scale. Now, you'll notice that we don't miss any notes out with this. It's just a linear alphabetical arrangement. So we're going to go from A, A sharp, B, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp. And then if we go to A, we're just repeating it anyway. So if you look, if you count this, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. That's the 12 notes of the chromatic list, the chromatic scale. And then we're back to repeat A, A sharp, B, C, C sharp, and so forth, going higher in pitch. Of course, we can go backwards as well if you we want to. We can start from an A and come to meet this one, or we can start learning it backwards. We won't do that for now. Now, if you notice, when I hit the black notes, I only called them sharps. So that became A sharp. Yeah, but it's also called a B flat. That's the enharmonic equivalent. It's the same pitch with two different names. Again, it was the same with this one. This is F sharp. Also, same as G flat, enharmonic equivalent, the same pitch with two different names. And again, we've got here G sharp. Oh, damn, sorry. This is C sharp. I'm thinking them over here. This is C sharp and D flat. We all make mistakes, beg your pardon. And we've got D sharp. Okay, and it's same as E flat again we've got here we've got f sharp and that's same as g flat and then we've got g sharp here that's same as a flat and then we're back to the beginning and i've just wrote out here the 12 notes of the chromatic scale and i'm just going to add in the enharmonic equivalent so a sharp is the same as b flat i put a ring around them C sharp is the same as D flat. D sharp is the same as E flat. And F sharp is the same as G flat. And the last one is G sharp is the same as A flat. Now, just while we're here talking about keyboards, let's just uh, just clarify something. When we're going from left to right on the keyboard, we're starting on the low notes and going to the higher notes. We're going from the bass notes up to the treble notes. Low pitch, high pitch in gradation steps. It's all about waveform, hertz and such. By the time we've got to this um, 440 hertz concert pitch, the waveform or the frequency is fairly close together. Uh, what I really mean by that is if we, do, we, if we did this, big wide waves, and then they got nearer and nearer and nearer and nearer, okay? They're the same height, and I think if you put a, a straight a horizontal line between them, we can, for example, we might say this area from, from this wave to this wave there, the distance between the two. I think it's somewhere like here. We, we extract this there and we, we might do this. Okay. We might call that section 440 hertz uh, as a, an agreed reference frequency length of the waveform between the, the crest and the pitch or whatever, uh, whatever this is called here. 
So we can say that round the here is a certain pitch, and round here is another pitch that's lower. Different frequencies. And of course, uh, when we talk about middle C here, even though it's a chromatic scale that we've just shown, this middle C in the middle of your body on a keyboard there, uh, our right hand tends to play from middle C to the right, and left hand plays below middle C. Now, of course, that's not a hard and fast rule. Sometimes they actually cross over. The right hand might go below middle C and left, vice versa. Also, the, the kind of importance with that middle C um, is if you're using traditional piano music known as the grand staff, where it's got two staves, one for the left hand, one for the right hand, kind of joined up in a gap in between, you find that the, if you put a line right in between that gap, that would be the, 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 the C. It's kind of the C shared between left and right. Now, although I've shown a chromatic scale from this A to this A, we could actually go from any note to the same note higher or even lower if you want to go backwards. So let's just show that. I'll use the previous diagram that I drew up. So if we say, let's go from, I don't know, let's go from C to C. We haven't just done that, no. Okay, if we go from this C, look for the group of two black notes, the one to the left. Doesn't matter which one you use, you can use that one. Or you can go further down your keyboard and use this one, or go further up. Okay, whichever one, we'll just stick to the middle for now. So C, so that's one. Go up there, C sharp, D. D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B, and then we're just back to C there. So if you count them, this is the chromatic scale of C to C. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And then we can start again. 1, 2, 3, 4. So we've got C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B, and back to C. And these have got the enharmonic equivalents. So C sharp is the same as D flat. D sharp is the same as E flat. F sharp is the same as G flat. G sharp is the same as A flat, and A sharp is the same as B flat. Now what I've done here is I'm going to go on to physically show you the chromatic scale, how it's expressed on the guitar, where to find it, how to find it easier. Um, now we're going to use a six-string acoustic guitar, and I want to show its relationship to the piano keyboard. Basically, when the, looking at the six strings called open, that is, they're not pressed down, the, the, you have a thick string and obviously going down in thinness or thickness down to the thin string, six strings. And I want to show you where they are um, on the piano keyboard and how actually you, you can tune a guitar, tune the strings to an electronic keyboard that's in tune, of course. So let me show you the equivalent um, physically on the piano where the strings are. Now what I've drawn up here, we've got a full size uh, clavin over here, okay? But I've show, I'm going to show you here, we've got middle C there, and here is our A above middle C that we were talking about earlier on. Now, ironically, most people don't know this, that an acoustic guitar, the six strings of an acoustic guitar actually start down here. So if you look here, we've got E there, we've got another E there, another E here. So we've got, that's one octave, and that's two octaves. So they're basically below middle C. So a guitar is actually quite low sounding in comparison to the pitch of a piano. So the first thing to do is look, find your middle C, and two notes above it is your E. Now that's going to be a thin string of a six-string acoustic guitar. Uh, even an 
electric guitar too. Now that's your highest uh, note. That's the open string, incidentally, the thin string, the open string, i.e. it's called. And then we can go to the thicker string, which is another E, two octaves below. So you can actually tune to these. Let me just turn the volume up a bit. So we've got E, A, D, G, B, E. So we can remember is elephants and dogs grow big ears. Um, the obviously sixth string, six thicker string, six, five, four, three, two, one. So you can see that you can use an electronic keyboard. Don't bother with a grand or an upright because sometimes it can go out of tune, the acoustic pianos. But use an electronic one and if your guitar's out of tune, try to match it with these. Now, where we're going to show the chromatic scale on the guitar, I want to show you how it relates to the piano here. We're going to use the fifth string on our guitar and we're going to go A, A sharp, equivalent of B flat. So A, A sharp, B, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp. That's the 12 notes of the chromatic scale, then we're back to an A. So let me show you on the guitar how that relates. So here's a, a, a normal classic, a normal um, steel string acoustic guitar with six strings. This is the thickest string, six, five, four, three, two, one. That's an E, and that's an E, two octaves apart like I showed on the piano. Now, we're interested in the fifth string. Let's go up here. And at the minute, it's just, it's called open. So as soon as I pluck it, I'm plucking, plucking an open A. This is an open E. Okay. And that's another E. I think the guitar's in tune. Of course, you would want to check that first with a, an electronic tuner. So if we plucked the fifth string, I showed on the piano where that relates to. For, for a chromatic scale, what we want to be doing then, in fact, I'll have to put this, I'll have to put this down. If I, if I try to hold it in my teeth, maybe. If I, oh, I can probably do it now. Right. If I then fret it, press the fret of the fifth string and now pluck it. So listen to it open. I listen to it pressed. So I'm going up in pitch. I'm going to move my finger up to the next fret, and so forth. So basically what I've got, I've got A open, A, A sharp, B, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, and then back to an A, on the 12th string, so I can go A, A sharp, B. So I'm just repeating that bar there, two dots on the side, is the 12th fret. And incidentally, your 12th fret of the bar there, your string there, is exactly halfway from the bridge to there, to there. Okay. So if I go further up, I'm just going up higher in pitch. I'm just repeating that chromatic scale. So to demonstrate a chromatic scale on the guitar choose your fifth string pluck it open and then fret it the whole way down to the 11th fret on the 12th fret you're just repeating that chromatic scale over again so i hope that helps you to understand how simple a chromatic scale is now in order to you don't really use a chromatic scale they're just reference points for key scales and chords um so I think that I've probably covered enough today about the chromatic scale. It's just a linear alphabetical list of notes, the 12 notes. And then 12 notes, um, it's like the 12 keys. You can have the key of, or the key scale of A. You can have the key scale of A sharp. Also, the enharmonic equivalent of B flat. It's the same scale. Um, and obviously you can have the major scale of B, major scale of C, 
Um, now, when you're talking about major scales, you're you having to apply this tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone structure, which changes the chromatic scale entirely. So anyway, that's enough for today. Uh, I hope it's helped you to understand the chromatic scale a bit. Thank you very much for watching. Share whatever you want to do. Bye.